I think one of the big challenges for church communication is that we have to realize is that the whole world of communication is changing. We've invested huge efforts in terms of people, time and money into communications over the years. Now we have to rethink a lot of what we were doing. I think it means learning that the new forms of communication are much more interactive, participative, which requires that we develop the capacity to respond to people's questions, to listen to their preoccupations and their concerns and then respond to them. This in its own way is very challenging because it seems to be a much more intensive use of resources. But again, because of social media, conversations, debates that happen in private can also be very important public teaching moments. So therefore I think it's about learning to reorganize, restructure ourselves. I think many of those who are in authority are maybe a little nervous not because they won't be able to do it, but because they're simply not used to it. So when I find that there are bishops who are nervous, who are anxious about it, I think that's understandable. It's very often about encouraging them to realize that in fact, they're far better at this than they may think. I think not, no need to be afraid. I mean, I think of somebody like Pope Benedict at the age of 85, decided to give the approval for a launch of his own Twitter account. He knew from the beginning that there would be kind of negative reaction to this. But his idea was, no, we have to be here because this is where young people, and not just young people, but where people are spending an increasing amount of their time. And we have to somehow learn to bring the message of the gospel, the good news to Jesus Christ, to people in these new marketplaces. I think probably the main difference between the two is it's probably fair to say that Pope Francis has a more direct, more accessible form of communication. I think that's probably due to the fact that he had spent most of his life working close to people, close to people in parish and in pastoral situations. Therefore, he was used to a form of communication that was very direct. Pope Benedict was a man who came more from the world of academia, from the world of the universities, and from his experience working in Rome. He has an extraordinary ability to teach but it's very often material that you have to think about and reflect upon that you can't really understand immediately. So I think much of what we have from Pope Benedict, we will still be reading in 100 years time and trying to understand it better. Whereas with Pope Francis, we have a very immediate form of teaching. He's obviously very clearly somebody who is used to teaching, who has that idea of encapsulating his teaching in three short words, which makes it much more accessible to a general public. But I think in the long term what we're going to see is that these two popes will complement each other because each has strengths that will support and build on the other. For us, it certainly means that the difference is that with Pope Francis, particularly in the use of social media, where you're relying more on short video, where you're relying on, vid on pictures and on images, certainly he's much more a communicator who is almost made for Twitter who is almost made for social media. We've seen even with Instagram, posting photographs of the Pope, because the Pope is always doing something different or something special. But all of this is not being done as a communication stunt. It's not a trick. This is just the man. He is naturally and spontaneously communicative. And this is great news, I think, for all of us who work in this field. Yeah, I think the first thing for a journalist who's trying to understand the world of religion. I'd make a distinction between, say, a journalist who's not a believer, but I think he or she should make a huge effort to understand the church. I often use the example of sports reporters. Nobody would be allowed to report on a football match or on a golf competition or on a tennis competition unless he or she had a basic understanding of the rules and an understanding of the people who are involved. Same way, I think, for journalists who are coming to work in the area of religion, they need to try and understand religion on its own terms. Then maybe the journalist who is a believer is a bit like sometimes the sports journalist who is also a fan. <laughs> Many times sports journalists are very strongly fans of one club or another, of one tennis player rather than another, but they have to learn to be objective in their reporting in order to be fair to to the dynamics of what they're dealing with. So I think this is important for people who come into this area. So what I would say to people in Barcelona, to all people is, thank God for the blessings you have to live in such a wonderful city. 
continue to look after the people to come to visit your city. And that's where I would say to people of faith, to people of religion, welcome those who come to visit your churches. Welcome them not just as tourists, but as people who are journeying and trying to understand better where they're going in life. Pope Francis always says, all of us are pilgrims. See that the tourists who come may be looking for tourism, may be looking for a holiday, may be looking just to relax, can also be people who are searching for something more and use the gifts of your city to talk to them of God and particularly of God's love for all people.